I, uh, I help people overcome inner obstacles. Help them make positive changes in their lives. Like a life coach, yeah? Something like that. Okay, I would have loved to have talked about the new Saw movie in the month of October, but as you can tell by the shirt, that hasn't happened, and that's because the YouTube fair use policy, that is totally not decided by them, have, as always, demanded that we spend at least two days or more fighting about this, so it's November. As for the movie itself, it's good. But it's a bit overrated. Directed and edited by Kevin Gruder, his first time doing both after involvement in every movie thus far, the film was shot on location in Mexico City, making it the only film to take place out of the US. Obviously, it was a huge success, becoming the highest rated in the franchise, but I wouldn't say it's as good as the original, it's probably on par with the following sequels, which is a huge step up, but it's definitely overhyped. Given my statement made in the ranking video about this being yet another Saw movie, which was merely based off of five mediocre sequels, of course many comments were given telling me how wrong I had it, stating that the movie is amazing, some calling it the best in the franchise. Yeah, it's a good movie, I definitely wouldn't call it the best, and it is not without some flaws. Luckily, being a convoluted mess is not one of them, and I think that comes down to the plot. Taking place between the first and second movie, it focuses on John's dealings with a team of doctors who claim to have miraculously cured cancer, but are actually just con artists offering desperate people false hope for profit. That alone is much more engaging than cops are evil, and while not as relatable as the health insurance theme from Saw 6, it definitely avoids the common issue of the victims being misplaced. While that movie literally sentenced the innocent to death, Killing is distasteful! There's nobody to root for here. This leads to a premise that would be legitimately hard to completely mess up, and I'm happy to say they didn't. This is a good movie. It's just that it has some other flaws, some of which have been overlooked, uh, some haven't, and they wouldn't exactly call these issues new. If I went into this completely blind, given it's the 10th installment, I'd be satisfied, but considering the reputation this movie has achieved, I can't help but say it's a bit overrated. How could this possibly be? Well, we're gonna get into how. This is, later than I would have hoped, Saw X. Oh hey, how's my ad revenue doing you? We see John Kramer, again played by Tobin Bell, emerging from a CT scan and told he only has months to live. After this, he sees the custodian about to steal from a patient and has an idea for the movie's opening trap. I'd like to play a game. It's I want to play a game. So upon seeing this in the trailer, I was a bit confused by it. It's one of the more unique ideas in the movie, being a vacuum that'll suck out his eyes, obviously related to his job, but this may be one of the few times I could undoubtedly say I'd pass. To win, he has to flick a dial, breaking all of his fingers, and while that would definitely suck, it's better than dying by having her eyes sucked out. We also knew there was going to be a lot of traps in this movie that took things further than previous movies, and given this one is on the cover, I was surprised to see it being so tame. It's still a good scene nonetheless, in which he somehow fails, and then... Good choice. He just imagined it. I guess I'm okay with that. Again, it's the most advertised trap in the movie, and it doesn't even really happen. In some cases, they might complain about this, but it is nice to have something in the movie's intro, and this is a unique way of getting that done. I can't say that I loved it, just because the decision is too easy in my opinion, but it's still a good scene. As far as my ranking is concerned, I'd probably say the okay tier. He runs into Henry from the Cancer Support Group, played by Michael Beach, who, despite having four-stage patriotic, is now in complete remission. He claims he was cured by an experimental Norwegian treatment by a group led by Dr. Peterson, and gives John a link because he's not available in the U.S. Good luck, man. Okay? I am... I'm rooting for you. Yeah, I definitely believe this guy's honest. 
He finds out that Peterson has gone into hiding, as what he's doing isn't exactly convenient for the standard drug companies, but he does manage to contact his daughter Cecilia, played by Cinema Cody Lunn, who refers him to a clinic in Mexico City located off the grid. The fifth, Friday after next. I think I could make that. Hmm, I don't know. I kind of had plans for that day. It's the only day to clean out the attic, and the trip is kind of long. Uh, I know, maybe you come here. Hello? Oh well, back to the will. So, one thing I find odd about this is that they don't even mention the events of Saw 6 when he was denied coverage. In that movie, he refers to it as a Norwegian clinic that Henry mentioned, so I question when this took place, as he's clearly already on his way to Mexico. I think the correct answer is it's a coincidence and not related, or the movie's set in Mexico, not Norway, so we don't think about that. Isn't that convenient? So he heads down there and meets the cab driver Diego, played by Joshua Okamoto, who, due to his talkative personality, definitely doesn't come across as a future trap victim. That's where the priests chop the hearts out of their subjects and roll them down the stairs. <laughs> They run into a bit of a snag, though, as a van full of masked men threaten to kill him, but upon confirming that it's John Kramer, we see that it's just a precaution, as the clinic must be kept secret. He meets the clearly innocent Gabriella, played by Renata Vaca, who claims to have been cured by Cecilia, anesthesiologist Mateo, played by Octavio Hinojasa, and nurse Valentina, played by Paula Hernandez. There is also Parker Sears, played by Stephen Brand, who again claims to have been cured, and Carlos the Kid, who John bonds with for one scene, who will have a pivotal role to play later. So, one of the most common criticisms about this movie is that a half hour of the two hour runtime is spent on stuff like this. And I can kind of see that. The problem is, we know what's going to happen even if the trailers didn't make that obvious. As long as you've seen most of the other movies, the fact that he's being scammed is abundantly clear. You'd have to go into this completely blind to not know what's coming, but that being said, I don't mind it that much. The atmosphere in this is like nothing in the franchise so far, and gives you a sense of emotion that would come in a situation like this. John is also developed as a character in a way he's never been up until this point, and even though he's clearly way too old given when this takes place, it's not as distracting as you might think it'd be. Now, if you've seen my Saw ranking video, which I'd assume you have, you'll know I'm not big on the notion that John doesn't kill people, and I normally wouldn't be a big fan of trying to humanize somebody like that. I never thought John needed any more development, thus being the reason I wasn't into the prequel idea, but the thing is, I like the way the movie takes it. It gives him a reason to be legitimately pissed off, opposed to just being he's dying and other people don't appreciate life. And there's even a moment when he's supposedly cured and throws away one of his sketches, implying that he's going to give up making traps. It's not exactly explained in detail, but it's a nice implication that he's seen the good in people, only for that to change a few minutes later. I love scenes like this that make you think, and despite a half hour for a conclusion that we know is coming, I can comfortably say I'd watch it again. Needless to say, I was on board with the hype. So as we know, he gets his surgery and is supposedly cured, but upon bringing Cecilia a gift, he finds out the whole thing is fake, and it's a damn good scene. This is absolutely perfect. The build-up is perfect, and you feel every bit of it. Again, I can't really sympathize with John. Uh, nobody could if they watched all of these. But that being said, it does not take away from this scene, and this may actually be the movie's highlight. I'm not saying the rest isn't good, but this is real well done. So it's back to the old grind. He kidnaps Diego, who was also the doctor in disguise, and interrogates him off screen for whatever reason to get the other's locations. He then puts him in a trap in which he must remove pipe bombs from his arms using scalpels. I'm not quite sure why the scalpels are taped on, but this may be my favorite trap in the movie. But they can slice through flesh and muscle, allowing you to cut the cancer away, live or die. The choice is yours. 
And again, it's not because the rest are bad, it's because it's the only one in the movie to make me ask the question, would I be willing to do this as all the rest go too far in the other two directions? On top of that, it's just a real fun scene that contains stuff that YouTube won't like, and has enough suspense to keep you guessing if he'll make it. Which in the end, he actually does, which is something that hasn't happened since, uh... When did that last happen? Okay, obviously nobody survived Spiral. Jigsaw had everybody dead by the end. Bobby didn't die, but technically he couldn't and he saved nobody. And William was sentenced to death by the end for bullshit reasons, so... Saw 5. Unless you count Hoffman escaping his trap at the end of Saw 6, everything since then has ended in failure unless it was mandatory that somebody live. Now you see why I didn't get excited about this, you can't deny the laziness in that writing. Luckily this movie does not have that problem, and the only real flaw is the fact that John approaching this guy who still has the scalpels taped to his hand might not be a good idea. Aside from that, it's a perfect trap that it would have likely ranked very high on my list. Hell, maybe even top 10, it's that good of a scene. The other victims are kidnapped, including Cecilia, in her big expensive house. And we see the person doing this is his associate Amanda, again played by Shawnee Smith. I... What did she say? I... I don't know. So yeah, Amanda's back, and they felt the need to show us in detail that she is, in fact, the one who kidnapped them. Kind of already knew that. But there is the unavoidable issue that she's kind of aged a bit. In the case of John, I can get past it, but this is really fucking noticeable. I know it can't be helped. If she wasn't there at all, it wouldn't make any sense either. But it is an issue that's kind of hard to ignore. They wake up in the clinic, and it is neat how she's wearing John's signature cloak. And after the whole deal of everybody saying we didn't know any better, the true games can finally begin. The first one being Valentina, and my opinion on this may be a bit controversial. I thought you said there was a key. He was speaking metaphorically. He does that a lot. I don't personally know how people rank the traps in this movie, but I have a feeling this one ranks relatively high on a lot of lists just because of how extreme it is. She must manually sever her leg with a geely saw, and then extract the bone marrow within three minutes, or else her head will be severed. And given the pain this would cause, along with the fact that she has to do it by hand, against the fact that the death wouldn't be that painful, I just don't see this as reasonable. It doesn't beg the question, would I do it? I'd probably just say, kill me now. But that's not the reason I don't like it that much. The flaw here comes down to execution. Not only does she do everything she's told, but she does it almost immediately. But I guess because she hesitated for a few seconds, she dies anyway. I'm sorry, but who wouldn't hesitate? This is something about the franchise I really can't stand, even if the person is completely irredeemable, complying to what the trap says and then dying anyway for a stupid reason is just not good. Okay, I finally attached the teeth that I ripped out to the fingers of my right hand that I chopped off with the duct tape that I pulled out of the pit of broken glass to make a big enough rod to press the button, thus opening the door, setting me free. Here I go. <sighs> okay, with only 15 seconds to spare. So, as we wait for the real big ass door to open, I'm gonna remind you to like the video and subscribe. <laughs> wait. In the end, this problem is very easy to avoid have them hesitate longer, and in this case, it just kind of pissed me off at the end. I don't hate it, I wouldn't rank it that low, but I wouldn't rank it that high either, and the best thing about this is probably John's dialogue. The wire saw inside that box was invented by an Italian physician, Leonardo Gili. Uh, that's true. We won't. But Valentina might. You promised dying people. Dying!
betraying people. Don't hesitate, because your time is prescribed. Aside from the pretty decent acting, not a whole lot to love about this one. After this, Amanda questions if what they're doing is right, and I'm not a huge fan of that either. I get what they're trying to do, and in John's case, his development is one of the best things about the movie, but I can say the same for Amanda. She's not what I would call a, a decent character. In Saw 3, she was mean to Lynn for no good reason, and even though I like the reverse bear trap, it never really made any sense to have Amanda cut into a living person to get a key, as I don't think she'd care that much. For whatever reason, she's nice at random points in this movie, and the rest she isn't, and I feel they just wanted to do that. I don't think it was needed. Then again, I never much liked Amanda anyway, so maybe that's the issue. Because I think you're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur. A phone they conveniently left out goes off, but they can't reach it. So Cecilia disemboweled Valentina in a scene that cannot be shown, and use her intestines as a rope to obtain the phone. A needlessly gory scene that doesn't even make sense in the grand scheme of things, and we'll get to why that is later. She manages to call somebody, but is immediately shocked, and I'm sure this will affect nothing and should be ignored. In a somewhat stupid scene, she tells them she was calling her father, who supposedly could save John, and for some reason, Amanda believes it. I have no idea why, but then the surprise visitor shows up. That being Parker, who also knows he's been screwed over and wants his money back. They explain to Parker what they're doing while keeping him restrained in case he doesn't agree, and the fact that Valentina only died because she didn't have the will. No, really, they say that. We don't kill. You chopped her fucking head off! Valentina died because she didn't have the will to live. She failed her test. No, she died because it was a second too late, and this is a problem this movie hasn't addressed. Mateo is next to play, this time being presented by Billy himself, who sadly doesn't appear much in this movie. So, here's something I really like about this one. There's this thing there that says, play me, I'm not gonna touch that thing. <laughs> Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure a lot of traps in this franchise could have been avoided by doing what he just tried to do there. In this case, they thought ahead and it's mandatory, but what if Bobby had done that with the silent circle? Eventually the cops showed up, and a minor nitpick, uh, why are the tapes even needed in this movie? He's literally there, he announced the last one in person, so it's kind of pointless. Well, anyhow, the trap is kind of like the last one, as in what you have to do is beyond unreasonable. You must cut into his skull, extract a piece of his brain, so it can slowly dissolve and unlock a key needed to escape. Aside from this being insane, it's a step up for three reasons. One, he does waste a reasonable amount of time, justifying him failing. The task at hand is something you could do quickly if you really, really wanted to, thus making up the lost time. And even though most people probably would just say, kill me now, the penalty for losing is not revealed, so it could potentially be worse, and I'd say maybe it is. So, with a few key changes, he made a satisfying trap that I think I would rank pretty high. It's creative, has a unique ending, and again, is just a well-acted scene. They release Parker, and Gabriella engages the next trap, which is to be hung in the air by two chains, and be subjected to radiation if she can't break her bones to escape the shackles. Radiation. Radiation machines are not to be trifled with. So follow my instructions carefully, Gabriella. I like this one for a number of reasons. Uh, one, it's actually doable, a reasonable objective, and it fits in nicely with the movie's theme. It's kind of unfair that she gets off so easy compared to the other two, but one thing I don't understand is why she didn't just break the chain on her arm first. The one on her leg is attached to the ground, so she could have just avoided that one completely. Maybe I've missed something, but I've rewatched the scene a few times and I can't see any good reason to not do this. Aside from that, it's a decent trap that I'd probably give a high ranking. She manages to get free, and we have the ultimate twist. Parker is not good, and was on Cecilia's side the whole time. Shocking. He was the one she called when they conveniently left the phone out, and after being set free, she kills Gabriella because 
she's a loose end. She then plans on making them play the game meant for her, which seems to involve two people. But despite being the most irredeemable, unlikable character in the franchise, that isn't enough. And upon seeing Carlos outside, who just happened to be there, she makes him play the game with John instead, because she knows they had that one scene when they bonded. Okay, first off, this is blatantly obvious. I'm not surprised one bit that Parker is bad. The fact she killed Gabriella makes no sense, as she was rooting for all of them to succeed, despite them trying to blame the whole thing on her. Do you want to know what I thought while well, I watched them each die? One less person to split the money with. Um... No, 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 no! Stop with your foot. You'll swing out of the way. No. And the fact that she involves the kid in the trap, who again just happened to be there, really feels like the movie just trying to take things further. The trap ends up being a blood boarding trap, which is like waterboarding just with blood. And it is a pretty good scene, but I'm too distracted by the obvious outcome, and the fact that involving a kid is just pointless. We already have an antagonist who is literally impossible to not hate, so why do we need this too? The kid was in two scenes, we don't really care about him, this is not good writing, I'm sorry, but it just isn't. And what happens next isn't that great either. They go upstairs to get the money, in which Parker questions why the trap involves two people, and we get the true, ultimate twist of the movie. The whole thing was planned out. The classic music is playing, so we know it's time to explain what's really going on. You see, when the phone was left out of reach, they knew they would cut into Valentina and use her intestines to get it. They knew she would call Parker, and everything would play out just how they planned. Aside from the kids showing up, that wasn't planned. Still don't know why that was needed. But this is the big twist, and damn is it stupid. I'm sorry, but if you didn't see this coming, this really is the franchise for you, because some movies actually have real twists that are well thought out. When I said this movie was overrated, this is why I said that. There have been some flaws, but nothing too consequential up until now. A lot of it makes no sense, and I don't even get the overall point. Obviously, they have to fight over the ventilation hole while the room fills with deadly gas, which is a fate that Jigsaw said would make her wish she was dead, but why not just kidnap them both? What was even the point of all this? To give Parker a chance to not pull the gun on them? I mean, why wouldn't he? I guess he just wanted an excuse to play the theme they always play and show you how something happened, but it's beyond unneeded. To top it all off, the worst case scenario is you die from the gas, which is a lot better than any other fate in this movie, and of course Cecilia wins anyway by stabbing Parker, something I guess they thought they foreshadowed, meaning the character we all sufficiently despise doesn't even die. Yeah, she's stuck there, and they do give the money to Carlos, which you'd think the families of the dead patients could have used. And even if we're meant to believe she's just gonna die in there, that's odd too, because that's not how traps are supposed to work. But I guess given this movie's success, this particular plot might not end here. But yeah, I don't like the ending, I think it's beyond stupid, and if not for this, this would be my definite favorite sequel. It still wouldn't overtake the first movie, but as it stands, I'd probably prefer Saw 2, which actually has an engaging twist. That's not the end just yet though, as there is a mid credit scene that shows us Henry getting his commitments, and... Out of all the men to cheat, you pick John Kramer? Yes, it's Hoffman, making his return in the final scene, and I guess that's fine. As for the trap, we don't see it play out, I'd assume it ends badly. But that was Saw X, and it's still real damn good. But, it's overrated. And I'll stand by that. I may give off the impression that I prefer the first hour of the movie and dislike everything since, but that's not the case at all. I just feel the first half has a lot of engaging moments, elements we don't commonly see in the Saw movies, and develops Kramer in a way we've never seen. 
I've talked enough about that, but when we do get to the traps themselves, it's still quite good. When it comes to an analysis, I have to point things out I don't like. It does not mean I hate the movie, but I feel a flaw like a trap not being as good as the rest, or character traits that don't make sense have to be addressed. Overall, it's really only the ending that makes me say it's overrated, and you know how I feel about that by now. But if you take that out of the equation, it's for the most part a solid movie. The rest of the story is quite good, which is one of the main things about the franchise that has to be done right, and the other is the traps themselves. If you've seen my ranking, you'll know I can appreciate that even if the rest of the movie sucks. And aside from the final trap just being stupid, and the Julie Saw trap ending in death for a bullshit reason, there's not many complaints to be had. I like the idea of the vacuum not being real, even though some don't. The pipe bombs are probably top 10 for me. And the brain surgery and radiation traps are again quite satisfying. The bloodboarding is okay for what it is, even if it's only for plot purposes. And as far as the traps go, the movie does not fail there. As for ranking them, which some people wanted me to do for this movie, that's probably not gonna happen, as I've given my opinions on them already, along with an idea of where they would rank, but I do appreciate the question. Saw X is definitely one of the better movies, but I don't think I'd hype it up as much as people have. Even without the ending, I don't think it's particularly amazing, but if you're a fan of the early movies and the torture porn genre, or just love Tobin Bell's acting, it's easily a recommendation. It's by no means perfect, but what it does right, it does right. And most of the flaws aren't really anything new, so no good reason to not watch it. I never thought I'd say this, but I kind of want to know what they'll do next, and for the 10th Saw movie to have me saying that, well, that's beyond good enough. I'm the Analyst, and remember kids, when it comes to things that have to get done that are just not optional, you have to commit. You really have to commit. So, you've made it to the end. That's an impressive feat indeed. Since you managed that, I guess check out the gaming channel, in which I cover a variety of gaming topics, like analysis videos such as this one. If you're into that, then press the link in the description. It's that simple.